Hello, welcome to Bible study once again uh, on this Wednesday, uh, the last Wednesday in the month of March. It's hard to believe that on Friday, um, it will be April Fool's Day, as they call it. And uh, it's almost uh, springtime uh, out there. Uh, but anyways, we've been going through the book of Genesis, uh, talking about the different characters of Genesis. Of course, we started with uh, Abraham. We talked a little bit about Isaac. And then many more lessons about Jacob. Uh, we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 30, Genesis chapter number 31 uh, today. And uh, what a helpful passage of scripture. Um, we see uh, Jacob had been living with his uncle Laban uh, more than 14 years. Of course, he worked seven years uh, for Rachel. He worked seven years uh, for Leah. He worked seven years more for, for Rachel. And uh, of course, we know Jacob, the name Jacob itself means a schemer or trickster. And uh, when he moved to Uncle Laban's after fleeing uh, from his brother Esau, he met his match in Uncle Laban. And of course, uh, we saw in previous lessons um, this month where Uncle Laban uh, pulled one over on him and of course, uh, switched the women. And uh, he thought he was getting racial, but he got Leah. And then he had to work seven more years uh, for Rachel. Now we have uh, Jacob's family uh, starting to grow. He's been working uh, for his father-in-law. Now he wants his independence. He starts having children. As a matter of fact, uh, he has 11 children. Uh, he just had uh, Joseph. And uh, that brings us to Genesis chapter number 30 and verse number 25. The Bible says, And it came to pass when Rachel had borne Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go into my own place, and to my own country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go. Uh, Laban, cultural-wise, Laban did have some power. He did have some authority um, over his daughters, over uh, Jacob, for that matter. And, um, of course, um, Jacob had his whole living existence, uh, as far as money, uh, through his uncle Laban. And so now he's wanting his freedom and he's begging really, uh, Laban. He's saying, let me go. Uh, let me, let me out of here. And, um, I, I want to go. I've done, I've done enough service for you, uh, these last, uh, uh, over 14 years. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience, listen to this now, I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for your sake. You know, Uncle Laban was smart enough to realize, hey, you know what? I've been blessed uh, because of you. Um, God has blessed me because of you. I, I don't want to let you go. He does not want to let him go. He said, hey, uh, your uncle... Uh, uh, you, you're, you're blessing your uncle through my own, um, uh, I can't think straight. You're blessing your uncle just by, by your presence, by you being here. Um, God is blessing me through you. And then he said, appoint me my wages and I will give it. And he said unto him, thou knowest how I have served you. Well, Jacob rebuts that and he says, hey, come on now. I've, I've served you, uh, enough. I've watched over your cattle. I've helped you. Um, that's another reason why you should let me go. And verse number 30, 30, for it was a little, uh, for it was little which thou hast before I came and now increased unto a multitude. And so uh, Jacob here is using Laban's own words. He said, Hey, you're right. Uh, look at everything I've done for you. I deserve uh, my, my freedom. And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shall not give me anything. Uh, I don't want anything. I just want, I want to go. If thou do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted and all the brown cattle from among the sheep. So he says, you know what? I don't want anything. But, you know, since I've worked all these years, just give me uh, the leftovers. Uh, he says, give me, give me the speckled. Uh, give me the second hand. Give me the worst of all the sheep. I don't want the best. Just give me uh, the speckled, the spotted. Just give me those uh, from among the sheep and the spotted and the speckled among the goats. Of such shall be my hire. Just give me 
uh, some spotted and some speckled, and I'll be on my way. Uh, you're going to have the majority, Laban. You're still going to be rich. Just give me the spotted and the speckled from among the sheep and among the goats. And it says here, so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen. He said, hey, you know what? You can even double check, look at everything before I leave. And uh, and I guarantee you there's, there's not going to be any good animals there. They're all going to be spotted. They're all going to be speckled. Uh, I'm not going to steal from you. You can check it. And uh, and Laban said here, he said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. He said, Okay, I'm going to do it. Then listen to what this crooked uncle did. He removed that day the he goats that were ring straight and spotted, and all the goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and the brown among the sheep, and gave them to his sons. Listen to this. He said, okay, I'll give you those. And then immediately he began to take them and hide them. He gave them to his sons. And look what he says here in verse number 36. And he set three days journey between himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. He said, okay, I'll give you these sheep, the speckled, the spotted, the speckled, the spotted goats. And they made a deal. And then immediately, Uncle Laban removed all the very animals that see, he said he was going to give to Jacob. And not only did he remove them, he sent them three days journey down the road. Just so Jacob wouldn't uh, just mistakenly see them or, or take them. And that's the kind of guy that Laban was. And here's the lesson today. God wants to bless us. He wanted to bless Jacob. As a matter of fact, he promised that he was going to bless Jacob. Now, here's the lesson uh, this afternoon, that God's going to bless us in spite of the Labans in our lives. God is going to bless us, in, bless us in spite of the obstacles. And you know what? We're going to have all kind of obstacles in our way. Uh, in this situation, it was a specific person that was an obstacle. We're going to have people in our lives, unfortunately, that will do things uh, to try to remove our blessings. And of course, uh, there are circumstances also that are obstacles to us receiving blessings. And then there's other things. There's a devil, of course. So there's there's our, our world in which we live that's, that's constantly robbing from us and the governments and different things like that. But you know what Jacob did? He still trusted God. He still obeyed God. And look at what he did. Jacob just continued. It says, and he sat three days journey betwixt, betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. You know what? Jacob didn't get mad and just leave. He didn't do that. He said, well, God's going to take care of it. And he continued to feed Uncle Laban's flock in spite of what Uncle Laban just did to him. And so, you know what? What a lesson for us just to trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So here's the lesson. Keep the faith. Keep trusting God. God's the one that promised to bless you, not Uncle Laban, but God. And so, so what Jacob do? He just continued going about his business. He continued to feed his Uncle Laban's flock. But here's what Jacob did. He still had this um, superstitious uh, person inside of him. Him, This scheming person was in, still inside of him. So he thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to follow this uh, old wives tale, so to speak. It's not a scientific thing, but yeah, they believed back in that day that whatever the animal was looking at when they bred, um, that's what kind of babies they were going to have. So so what did what did Jacob do? He took trees, he took branches, he, he and he and he stripped them of their bark so they would be striped. And what did he do? He put them in the water troughs. The dog, the dogs, the animals would come and uh, drink the water, and they would see these striped, uh, stripped uh, pieces of, of wood, these trunks there. And in seeing that, when they bred. 
they would have speckled and spotted and stripped or striped um, um, color on them. So you know what? Jacob said, hey, God's going to give me, even though Uncle Laban took the spotted and the speckled, God's going to give me more spotted and speckled. Uh, but what he did was he took matters into his own hands and, and, and stripped these the bark off of these trees, uh, thinking that, hey, this is going to help uh, these sheep and these goats um, to have the right kind of offspring. And uh, listen, it was not uh, the stripping of the bark that caused it to happen. Uh, it was God that caused it to happen. And that's another lesson for us, uh, a side lesson in, in this lesson uh, today. Uh, sometimes we think we can scheme or manipulate things to get blessings and, and those aren't, those aren't real blessings. Um, the blessings of the Lord, the Bible says, makes us rich and he adds no sorrow, uh, with it. But God allowed Jacob to do this and Jacob did this and lo and behold, guess what? By God's power, not by this stripped bark off of these trees, but by God's power, these animals started to be born. And what do you think they were? They were spotted. They were speckled. So sure enough, Jacob starts increasing his wealth because Uncle Laban had already promised to give him the spotted and the speckled. So now what happened? Well, all these cattle that Laban owns, now all of a sudden, most of them are having cattle that belong to Jacob. And wow, J Laban gets upset about it. His sons were upset. Look what it says in chapter 31 and verse number one. It says, and he heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's and of that which was our father's hath he begotten all his glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and behold, it was not for uh, toward him as before. And then the Lord spoke up, verse number three, and the Lord said unto Jacob, return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And we're going to stop reading there. But here's what happened. And Uncle Laban, he learned a valuable lesson. Hey, you know what? Um, quit while you're ahead, so to speak. Um, he was being stingy. He was being selfish. And we know the love of materialism, the love of money is the root of all evil. So he was trying to manipulate Jacob again. He'd been manipulating him for 14 years and he thought he could get away with it again. He'd have been much better off if he would have just given Jacob his, his sheep and his goats, the speckled, the spotted, sent him on his way. He would have had all of his riches still. But guess what? Because he was selfish, all of his cattle... Uh, the sheep, the goats, they started having spotted, spotted and speckled. And Jacob kept setting them aside. Jacob's flocks kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And guess what? Uncle Laban's flocks kept getting smaller and smaller. And the sons got upset about it. And we just read that. And they accused Jacob of taking away all that was their father's. But, but folks, it wasn't Jacob taking it away. Uh, it was Uncle Laban's own selfishness and own orneriness that caused him to lose things. And and how often do we do that? We blame other people. We blame God for things, for our predicament, when really it's our own decisions that cause us to fall into these situations. But uh, again, here's the lesson today. Um, rest assured, God's going to bless. And you know what? Uh, the Uncle Labans of this world uh, can't stop the blessings of God. Uh, the devil, he can't stop the blessings of God. Uh, the world situation, the world, the governments, they cannot stop the blessings of God. Now, can they affect us? Yes, just like Laban affected Jacob. But what do we do during those situations? Well, let me encourage you. Keep going out watering the cattle. Keep going out feeding the cattle. That's what Jacob did. He kept trusting God. He went out there every day, still kept feeding Laban's cattle. He kept watering Laban, Laban's cattle and he was waiting for God. And guess what God did? God came through. Uh, never forget this, folks. God is able. Just like Paul said in his writings, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. 
and God is able. I mean, think about everything that God has done. He hung the sun, the moon, the stars on nothing. Just like this planet Earth, it's amazing to think about it. It just hangs on nothing. It's spaced perfectly uh, a distance from the sun. It rotates around the sun so precisely that we can we can force, uh, foretell uh, even um, the comets that come by every so many years, the eclipses, all these things can be can be nailed down uh, to the hour, to the day. Why is that? Because God has made everything perfect. And it's just unbelievable uh, what God is able to do. And so I don't know what you're going through uh, in this life. But you know what? Uh, let's trust God. Uh, let's not lean unto our own understandings. When we feel that we are wronged by the Uncle Labans of this world, let's just keep trusting God, uh, His promises, and let's just keep uh, doing what we know to do. And what do we do? We we just expect for God to take care of the rest. And that's what Jacob did. And guess what? God did indeed uh, take care uh, of the rest. And so um, don't be a schemer. Uh, look what happens when we become schemers. It just leads to problems, just like it did in Jacob's life. And you know what? Laban, it costs Laban a lot because he was trying to uh, slick people. Uh, don't do that. Uh, and guess what? The things that we have, give glory to God uh, for it. And you know what Jacob did? He he saw those animals. They kept delivering more and more speckled, more and more spotted. And he gave God the glory. And we, we see that later in the scripture. Jacob began to get closer and closer and closer to God. Jacob began to realize more and more and more in his own life that it was God that was giving him these things. It was not him that was doing it. Uh, it was God that was doing it. So let's, let's remember also to keep giving God the glory. Uh, I earned it. Uh, I deserve it. I've got it coming to me. All those kind of things. No, let's just realize that God, uh, did it. Uh, trust in the Lord. And that's what Jacob was doing. Stand on his promises, even when you're wrong, even when the circumstances are bad, even in troublesome times. And look at the problems that we have in this world right now. What's going on in, in, in Ukraine? What's going on in, in Russia? What's going on in the Middle East? Even what's going on in our own country? What do we do? Well, let's just keep trusting God. Let's keep standing on his promises. And guess what? Uh, God will bless. God will honor his promises. God will honor his word, whether it's to Jacob thousands of years ago or whether it's to you and me today in 2022. And I hope this study was a help to you. What wonderful chapters, uh, 30 and 31, how God came through in a big way. And he'll do the same thing in your life and in my life. And I uh, hope to see you on Zoom tomorrow uh, at seven o'clock. Uh, don't forget, and I hope to see you the Lord's Day. Hope to see you Sunday. Um, the carpeting, the flooring looks awesome. I'm excited for everybody to see it. God bless you. Have a good evening.